Welcome to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. Another uh, video for you. Um, this is the most common problem that uh, we get in the workshop uh, in relation to bikes and that's gears. Uh, customers come in and say, can you sort me gears out? They're not working right. They're not going up and down right. They're all over the place. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is I'd do a little video on um, the reasons why gears don't work properly. Um, and uh, potentially what we need to do to make them work properly. So um, let's crack on. So in the workshop today, we've got a Cannondale Habit, uh, full sus. Um, nice bike, 2020, 21. Uh, this particular model has come with SX Eagle uh, group set on it. Um, the cassette fits onto a standard Shimano uh, free hub body. It doesn't need the XD driver. Um, so it's kind of budget, bud, Eagle budget entry level, if you like. The, the bottom bracket system is a dub, SRAM dub system, uh, which is just under 30 mil, the standard 30 mil bracket, bottom bracket um, size, diameter, it, on the dub it's reduced to 28.99, which is not a true 30, it's SRAM's own system. Uh, and it's specific to their, uh, their dub crank sets. You have to use a dub bottom bracket. You can't use anything else. So, um, okay, so the first thing that we need to do, this customer says my gears are all over the place. So let's uh, try and shift it and we'll see what's, hap we'll see what's happening. Well, I've shifted it to two or three times. It should actually be moving up. Uh, pressing the, the shifter on the handlebar it does nothing at all. Uh, it's starting to move now, so... Okay, so that's about it. It's not going to go up any, any further. Drop it back down to the bottom. There's obviously either the cable's not adjusted right or something's something's bent somewhere so let's have a look so the first things that we need to check basically is let's have a look at the chain wear it is fairly a fairly new bike so hopefully the chain's not too worn which it isn't it's not too bad at all it's well under 0.75 so let's have a look at the um the derailleur at the back let's get it punch it up you know shift it up as as far as we can go let's have a look so what we're looking for basically is um, if the derailleur, if the, the derailleur is actually 90 degrees from the, uh, from the, um, the cassette, um, it's not too far out there. Uh, it's just a little bit, a little bit bent, if you can see that. Um, just, it's just slightly out. It's just bent in a little bit at the bottom. Okay, so the other thing that I've noticed is the cable is all frayed there. So I, th I think we'll do with this, basically, is I think we'll start again. I think we'll take this cable out completely because it's frayed and needs a new one. Um, <coughs> so we'll undo this. I think we'll also we'll just we'll double check to make sure that the hanger... Uh, which is the uh, the piece of metal that the derailleur sits on that connects to the frame. I think we'll check that to make sure that that's actually not bent either. So let's undo the cable first. Take it right down, to, right down. That's it. And we'll undo this cable. We're going to need a new cable in it anyway. So let's just take that out. Okay. Now it's an internally routed cable system, um, but I think on this particular model, I think it, the the in, the um, the outer uh, of the cable goes all the way through the frame. Um, it's not split, so hopefully we can pull this old cable through uh, without having to um, to take uh, half the frame to bits to get to the uh, the cable inside. So let's um, let's cut it. It's going to be easier to pull through if we cut it and get rid of that bad end. Let's pull that through. We'll undo the... Pull that through there. 
That's it. So that means we've got no cable in at all. So what we'll do basically is, let's take this derailleur off. We'll just make sure that the um, the hanger is straight. So uh, it'll be a five mil Allen key on this. That's it. Now this particular, most, well, all SRAM Eagle systems have this uh, facility, you can actually drop it down, press this little button at the side um, and, the, and the, uh, the cage will actually stay in that position. You've got to be careful though because it's spring loaded and if you push it, it'll spring back. So you've got to be careful not to, uh, not to you know, get, push that, that cage too far back otherwise it'll catch your hands. Uh, you'll end it with uh, bruised fingers. So let's just undo this here and we'll let that drop down. So what we need to do is we need to check that this hanger is actually uh, sitting straight down. It's actually vertical and it's 90 degrees from the uh, from the rim. So if I get my if I get me uh, my hanger straightener, which will let us. Have a look to see if it is bent or not, because if the hanger's bent, uh, then we'll never be able to get that uh, derailleur ninety degrees from um, from the cassette. So we need to make sure that the hanger's not bent first. If the hanger's bent, then we, we've no chance. We're going to have to either straighten it or replace it. So what we'll do is we'll just drop that there. Now it's touching the rim at the bottom. So we'll lift it up out of the way of the spokes, take it out to the set to the back. And it's about a millimeter away from the rim at the back. And we'll take it up to the top. Uh, it's about two mil away from the rim at the top. So it's not, not exactly straight, but it's not that far off. So what I'm going to just do, I'm just going to just that, just push that in at the top, just slightly, just to create, just to bring that further in a little bit. Ideally, what we need to do is, if you've got uh, if you've got an eagle system, they are critical because of the size of the um, uh, of the big cog. There, it's 50, 50 teeth. So you can imagine when the derailleur is fully extended, any kind of any kind of uh, bend on the hanger or the derailleur is going to send everything way out of shape. So it's important that this is actually straight. If you can, if you got, if you if you can, you need to buy a spare one of these, uh, just in case, and you've got one. Okay, so I'd, so I think. Right. Okay. So we're all right there. So let's take that off. So that's fairly straight now. It wasn't much. So what we'll do is we'll just carefully put this back in the right spot. That's it. Being careful not to make sure that we catch that cage and take his hands off. Otherwise, not good. Okay, so let's get that, get that back on there. Okay, so we know, we know that the hanger's straight. If we look at the derailleur, it's kind of, it's, I don't know whether you can see that. Um, it's slightly out of shape. The cage is slightly twisting at the back, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. Uh, they're very difficult to actually straighten these cages. <clears throat> you can actually buy a new cage, and sometimes it's better off buying a new one rather than trying to straighten it. But it, it looks reasonable, so we'll leave it at that for now and we'll see how we go. So what we need to do now is we need to set these limit screws, uh, first of all, to the bottom to the bottom cog. Um, so while the cable's off, let's turn it and see if, what sort of noise it's making, whether it's in line with that cog. And it's not that far out, to be honest. It's nice and smooth. Watch you, watching your fingers, you're just trying to push it up there. Okay, so it's not too bad. So let's replace this cable. Let's put a new cable in here. That end's a bit battered, isn't it? So we'll put a we'll put a new end on there. Throw that in the bin. 
Right, let's move up to shifter. Okay, so we've moved up to, to the shifter end. Uh, on, the, uh, on the budget end shifters, the SX versions, you'll find that to get the cable out, um, you, there's a little rubber, a little rubber plug on the end there, which you just need to just grab hold with your fingers and just pull out. Can you see that? Um, just keep that safe. Don't lose it because uh, they're difficult to find in other ones. Um, so on the um, on the other ranges, the higher ranges, the GXs and the XX1s and the XOs, you'll find that you'll need to take this shifter off. There'll be a clamp uh, rare and there'll be a screw um, and you need to take the, uh, take the shifter off the bars and take the cover off the front to change the cable on those. But this one has a little blanking plug at the end. Now, what we need to do is, if you can see, if you can see, I'm just going to wind it down, take, take all the, wind it right down to the bottom, clockwise, till it, till it stops, not forcing it, and then turn it back two turns. That's it. And that sets us up for uh, a new cable. So, uh, what we need to do is we need to take this, this old inner cable, which we pulled out earlier on, we need to push that through so it pokes out of this hole. So I'm pushing it from the front uh, and it's there. Can you see it there? So just twisting it with my fingers, just so that's it. So it pops out. This this one looks damaged, actually. It looks as though it's been out before. Someone's uh, taken that out and damaged that. So anyway, we need to pull this out completely. Let's... Uh, Pull that out, that's it. Uh, so let's get a new cable. I always use stainless steel cables, uh, better quality, they don't rust, uh, they're better than galvanized. So we need to poke that back down there to find the hole. You might need to look down and you can actually see where it goes in if you look carefully. If not, you just shine a little torch down there and you can see it. Um, I'm at an awkward angle here. So let me just move it. Oh, I'm getting in there. Because <laughs> I can't see, there it is. I'm looking at an awkward angle. Okay, so. I thought I had it in. Let's look again. Okay. So, if we were to pull that cable through, okay, just need to pull that through. Just a, a quick tip, this shifter has to be right down at the bottom with no tension on it at all has to be on the smallest cog at the back. Um, I won't go into top gears, high gears, low gears, because it's just easier to understand by a small cog and a big cog and a middle cog. Uh, it's easier to just to understand that way, particularly if you're new. Um, so what we need to do now, now that uh, that's in there, let's put this rubber bung back. Um, it only goes one way and you can see which way it goes. Just being careful not to lose it. It just pops back in there. Just keeps any water from getting in there. That's in there, okay? So let's just keep put, keeping us tension. Uh, we're just trying to keep, keep the cable with tension on then. We'll just shift it just to make sure it's running freely backwards and forwards. Right down, which it is. So that's fine. So what we need to do now is put this cable back through the outer and that in there, that in there's not look, looking particularly good. So let's, uh, let's replace that end as well. Bob that in the bin. Put two new ends on it. 
uh, one top and one bottom okay so we we're right down on the bottom there we'll just feed it through just gradually slowly until it comes out the other end which it is doing just feed that in there okay so we've got the the adjuster uh, right down to the bottom clockwise and then back a turn a turn and a turn and a bit okay that's in there okay so let's move back down to the other end okay so we're back down at the other end this is a cable that we've just pulled through so if, we, if you remember we took the old end off there because it one it were quite nasty so let's I'm uh, a bit deformed so let's put a new one on there slide that on there and push it as on as far as it can go let's feed that back through there okay and we'll put this derailleur back in like a maintenance mode we'll push the cage right down push that pin in there at the top and that just keeps it in its in its place okay so what we need to do now is feed this cable through you can see actually where it goes through we got that um so you feed it goes through through there okay and we can see it coming out of the other end so we'll just guide it through okay so what we need to do now is just temporarily nip that up if you notice what i'm doing is i'm just actually pulling on it just slightly just to get the end it the loose tension out of there uh, just to make sure that it's actually sat fairly tight um, so let's just nip that up just just gradually this particular um, this particular clamp here just goes in one position so you've got to look carefully because there's a slot for the cable so just just nip that up just to see this tension and take that tension out okay so we'll leave it that length to begin with and we'll just drop that back up there okay and we'll see where we are now if you remember the we didn't need to adjust the lower limit screw because um it uh, it was sat in the right position at the bottom when we turned it earlier on but these two here these two are the limit screws you've got an upper and a lower limit screw there but the bottom one's fine so let's shift it let's uh, turn it and we'll shift it and we'll see where we go okay now that needs a bit of adjustment as you can see so let's go back down to the bottom we'll shift it just one and let's have a look at that chain line at the back and see where the chain is in relation to the next cog up it just needs a tweak so what we need to do is we need to get the adjuster on the top of the bar which is there we need to turn it anti-clockwise about half a turn right and then try again as you can see it's, 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 it's actually better but it'll probably still want more you are also listening as well it does sound a little bit clicky but it's better than what it was and if we look down the chain line's a lot better as well so let's try and get it up to the next one that next one oh still need a bit of adjustment there so let's it's obviously struggling to get back up to that next cog so let's anti-clockwise half a turn and try again it's still clicky let's turn it up again half a turn try again that's getting there now so what we would do is if this particular system if this derailleur were bent if it want 90 degrees then the further up we go the more difficult it is to start changing gears because of the length it's so it's exaggerated is the the bend but we straighten the hanger we know that they're really slightly bent but on the lower cage not the upper it looks so what we need to do now is I'll just I'll just cut that too cut that little bit short so it don't get fast in wheel okay so 
We need to be careful as we get up to the top because if these limit screws have been adjusted wrongly by somebody else then the chain's going to go over the top and it's quite difficult to get out sometimes so we just need to be careful as we go up we've got, we've got some click in there as we've gone further up let's have a look yeah the derail is slightly bent uh, because if we look, if I could take it back down if I take it about halfway down and we look again, we can see that the gap between the chain and the next cog up uh, is, at that point it's slightly close. Let's just wind a little bit off and we'll just see how we go. So we'll go clockwise half a turn and take it down and then we'll have a look at it. But what we're after basically is a smooth transition between up and down without no clicks. The only way we're going to get that is if all this is straight uh, and there's not an, not an unusual amount of wear on, on the drivetrain, which we know that there isn't because we've checked the chain. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just take a little bit of tension off that like we have did before. And what we're after basically is if, for example, I've got it on that cog there and if I shift it down, and then back up again, it should take the same amount of time to go up as it, do, as it does down. If it's taking longer to go down than it is up, then we need to adjust it a little bit more. It's not an exact science because these things are just pieces of metal and they do wear and, and they are susceptible to, uh, to wear, particularly if you don't um, take care when you're shifting, uh, when you're out riding. And obviously, uh, shifting under power is not good for drivetrain. It just knocks uh, knocks hell out of it. So let's have a look. I think we'll just drop it down just a little bit more. Just a quarter of a turn. Let's go right down to the bottom again and we'll start from bottom. This is what sort of we've got to be careful of, okay? So that actually doesn't feel too bad, to be honest. I'll just take a quarter of a turn off it. Just go uh, clockwise, a quarter of a turn. That's it. Just to, they are very finicky, their eagle gears. Quarter of a turn sometimes sends it, to, sends it out. So, um, what we need to do is we need to check the position of the derailleur on the top, on the biggest cog on the cassette. And we have a tool here. So if you can see that. This enables us to set the derailleur by this particular screw here, which winds the whole derailleur backwards and forwards. So if I take it up to the top. Okay, so the idea is if I drop that on the second, sorry, need to go down a cog. That's it, it needs to be on the second cog down from the top. So if I drop that, can you see that? Let me just bring it down. Let's just adjust that focus. Right, so the idea is that if we sit this in here on this particular cog, as far as it'll go, we roll it down and the idea is this particular nut on the top jockey wheel needs to line up with that point and it doesn't it just needs adjusting it needs to come out slightly to match that point so let's take as number three allen key as three mil allen key and we need to adjust this screw here so it meets and if you watch if i turn that clockwise can you see it's moving there that's it so we can see now that that center of the jockey wheel is actually where that pointer is so that means that the uh, top um, is set um, which is what what shram specify they actually provide this tool for us to say this is how in the correct position when it's on the big cog the derailleur needs to be in that that position there so that sorts that out 
so we know it's in right position now so we should actually get some reasonably decent shifting okay and what I'll do is I'll just double check Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm watching. I don't want this derailleur to be too far over that way. So I'm turning it and I'm watching these this chain, how it sits on this cog. Is it rubbing on these teeth at the front? Is it too close to that particular? Does it need coming back a little? And that kind of looks right, to be honest. And there's no noise there either. So... Uh, just is it it actually drops down a little bit not as quick as what it goes up so let's let's turn it clock on the shifter on the adjuster let's turn it clockwise a quarter to drop it down more that's it and I think we'll we'll leave it at that because the cable will, will stretch slightly over time And it'll fall into a better position. The other thing that we're trying, that we're struggling against, is this derailleur is just slightly out. It's the cage that's out. So without replacing the derailleur or the cage, we can, you know, we we have to, um, you know, try and get it as, as precise as we can. What I'll do when the customer comes and picks this up, I'll actually tell him that the derailleur or the cage needs some maintenance. Um, and then it's up to him then whether he wants us to replace it or do any more work on it. But at the moment, that's actually shifting fine. Okay, to finish off, what we'll do is we'll just cut this cable a little bit closer to this derailleur. Uh, we'll put a crimp on it. We'll put a crimp on it. And we'll just double check it before we finish off. Okay, we'll just nip that up again to <coughs> make sure that's tight. Okay, it's not going to go nowhere. So just to <coughs> uh, just to finish off, then we put a crimp on the end. We just need to finally just test the shifting again. Okay, that's not too bad. So. Um, we need to just take it out for a little bit of a test ride just to make sure it behaves itself uh, when, you, when you're riding it because sometimes they can be a little bit different from when they're sat on the stand. Uh, come back, make some minor adjustments if we need to. Um, but apart from that, I think we're done. Um, we could do with a little bit of lube on this chain. So we'll just, as per usual, go over and above board like we do at Cycle Fast. Just put a little bit of lube on there for him. Okay, so uh, this bike just came in for the uh, for the gears indexing and sorting out. So um, as far as Ed doing anything else, um, that's basically it. Um, but what I like to do is, I know it's just coming for this gear index, but I just like to give it a bit of a check over. Um, just to make sure that there's nothing, you know, on this bike that's going to cause him any problems in future. Just need to let him know. So I just kind of just go over a few things. I'll just check there's no undue play in the bottom bracket. And there's actually a little bit of play in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of play in there. There's an adjuster on the side on these dub bottom brackets. Um... And probably just needs adjusting. Okay, so I need to just make a note of that. There's, it's a tiny little bit of play which needs adjusting. Okay, um, <coughs> make sure that there's no obvious cracks or dints, bangs. Make sure his wheels are tight. <coughs> just get a, a six mil Allen key. 
just make sure these wheels are tight. Yeah, they are. Have a look at front. Yep, yeah. brake pads. Yep, yeah, they're all right. Bearings on wheel, fine. Bearings on back wheel, fine. Brake pads on back. Mm, low on the right hand side's low. Need to let him know about that as well. I'll just check the piv check the uh, pivots. Make sure there's no play in those. That's it. No movement there. Just quickly check the headset. Make sure there's no movement there. No. Just apply in the front brake. Just and rocking it backwards and forwards while feeling the top. There's no play there. Okay, so so what we've got just by simply looking at that after we've done what he asked us to do, um, which were the gear indexing, we know that there's a little bit of play in the bottom bracket. We know that the back pads are really low, um, but apart from that, uh, we're okay. So I hope you found found that useful, um, and um, the uh, Eagle gears take a little bit of setting up, uh, take a little bit more additional maintenance than other gears, um, but uh, they're worth keeping on top of. It's a nice system, and the and the the ratios are good as well. So uh, great for a mountain bike. So um, tune in to more videos. Um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some more uh, other stuff done soon. Uh, and um, yeah, subscribe. See you later. Bye.